any older person, or anybody really, but especially older people who are on prescription drugs, who are convalescing, who are in a nursing home or hospice situation, or nursing home, I should say, situation or whatever, liquid nutrition. That way you bypass any problems with the digestive system, which uh, always, uh, they're always there for everybody, but especially as we get older. That means bone soup for liquid protein plus the liquid polysaccharides. Make homemade bone soup or find somebody who does. And then, you know, if you don't cook, you can still find homemade bone soup in restaurants. And there are places where you can get it. So homemade bone soup, ideally, you know, organic and hormone-free. And then the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and, and veggie juices. You want him doing as much of his nutrition in liquid fashion as possible. Make sense? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, next yeah. thing. The next thing is you want to start to support digestive health. Okay? I'm going to give you these in order of importance. Liquid nutrition, number one. Secondly, uh, digestive health. And that means probiotics and fermented foods. The veggie juices will also help. And caloric restriction. I can't overest, can't say that enough. Caloric restriction. Calories represent work. And, but it's calorie restriction with optimum nutrition, the Cron diet. So you're making sure he's nutriated. You want to have as, as, as much nutritional bang for your buck, for your caloric buck. That's what a whole food is, and that's what a nutrient-dense food is. It gives you a lot of nutritional bang for your caloric buck, if, if that makes sense, if you know what I'm saying here. Mm-hmm. More, nu- more nutrients, less calories. Calories are the enemy. Nutrients are the friend. So that means uh, uh, micronutrients and, in addition to protein, fats, uh, and essential fats. You don't necessarily need to worry about the carbs. They're pretty much everywhere. And then the last thing, and I don't want to say the last thing because there's more, but the last thing I want to tell you right now is stabilize the blood sugar. Keep his blood sugar stable. Now, it would also help him when, you do, when you're doing the digestive stuff if you could support bile because his drugs are being excreted in the bile. So anything you could do to support bile synthesis is going to be helpful. Of course, the statin drugs are going to, you know, that's going to, you're going to be working against that a little bit. But helping with maybe taking bile salts or maybe taking bile precursors like, like taurine or glycine or using something called stomach bitters before his meal or even bitter foods like parsley to stimulate bile secretion. Anything you do to stimulate bile is going to be helpful. Now, there's many other things to do, but between those strategies, liquid nutrition, uh, caloric restriction, and working on digestive health with probiotics and fermented foods and such, stabilizing blood sugar and stimulating bile synthesis, you're going to go a long way towards adding years to his life. And by the way, everybody on a statin drug needs to be using coenzyme Q10. So if he's not using CoQ10, get him on it right away. Uh, probably 100 milligrams I, I a day. I'm taking it. I don't know if he's. I hadn't persuaded my parents to do that. Get him on uh, it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Get him on it. And ubiquinol. I'd be using the deluxe version, which is ubiquinol. Ubiquinol, but yeah, co- yeah, you know, as opposed to ubiquinone. Yeah. Hey, I got some calls I want to yeah. get to, Glenn. Thanks Thank for your you, call, buddy. Thank Appreciate you. it. Happy holidays. Happy New Year to you, Bill in Texas. Welcome to the bright side. Big Bill, what's up, man? Do we have Bill in Texas? Bill? Hey, um, yeah, I just want to get your opinion on uh, metformin. I figured you probably heard about it in the news lately. And yeah, uh, you know, you know what it's in the news for? I was just, I had an article here. I was going to read it today, actually. Uh, metformin is now being used as a general anti-aging strategy. Even Life Extension Strategies, Life Extension uh, Magazine, uses recommends metformin as an anti-aging strategy. I'm not buying it, and this is one of the problems I have with Life Extension, by the way, although I do read it every month, and, and they do have some good stuff there. This is an article I was going to read today, actually, from the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. New study indicates that metformin has the potential to treat, to prevent and treat something called preeclampsia, which is a condition that affects pregnant women. This is more of the idea that you can use drugs to get better. Not true. Lie. We talked about it via the statin drugs. I'm telling you this via metformin. Now, if you are a diabetic and you refuse to eat correctly, well, yeah, maybe you need the metformin to force your body to make more insulin, to force your body to handle sugar better. But nonetheless, the fact remains that it is cyto, that means cell, cyto, toxic, toxic to cells, And in the long run, it gets treated as a poison by your body, and that means all the poison control resources, including nutrients and bile, are going to be stressed out by every dose of metformin you take. How anybody in their right mind can think this is a good thing, I don't know, unless they bought the medical model hook, line, and sinker. That's my take on metformin. Now, have you heard something about metformin in addition to that, that it's for, aside from anti-aging or aside from preeclampsia? No, that, that, that's, that's my... That's what you'd heard. Um, yeah, exactly. So it's I know making the news. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're yeah. doing actual human trials in 2020. Yes, yes. Why would that be, Bill? I don't know if you've listened to this program before or a lot, but based on everything you've heard today, or if you've listened to the program in the past, why would the lo- what's the logic to using an anti-diabetic drug to increase longevity? What, what do you think that would be about? Right. So, I mean, even mm-hmm. on some of the previous shows, you've talked about, um, you know, insulin resistance. Yes. And- so exactly, you know, and it ties back to that, uh, the Alzheimer's and all exactly. these other. Exactly, exactly. So. What they're telling you is in their own, you know, in their own misguided way, what they're telling you is, is that sugar is the enemy and that insulin control needs to be, you have to have good insulin control if you're going to live a long life. But with their, then they switch it over in typical misdirection magician style into metformin. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They take you down the road. Oh, yeah, sugar's a problem. Insulin's a problem. Then they switch you into metformin. Not let's use B vitamins. Let's use thiamine, which is deficient in the American standard American diet. Let's use chromium. Let's use vanadium. Let's use magnesium. Let's not eat so much sugar. Let's eat more protein and coconut oil. Let's go ketogenic. Let's go paleo. They don't say that. They say go to metformin. See what I'm saying? Right. This, this no, is no, the, and so... The, the whole thing started, you know, they did the worm and rat studies, but then there's the anecdotal, and this goes back to statistics, right? But th- they say that um, anecdotally the, the folks with diabetes are living almost normal lifespans where they shouldn't be, right, right which is prompted in the human studies. So, uh, right. um, so where can I find resources on and information about the uh, cytotoxicity? Because, just, um, just Google. You know, just go something. to just go to any toxicology journal or toxicology uh, encyclopedia, and where they list specific toxins, and you'll find the dr- every drug you'll find in the toxicology book. Because the drugs are toxins. The flip side of pharmacology is toxicology. They're measured by something called an LD50. Have you ever heard of that? The LD50. Yeah. Uh, yes, for, yeah. the, for the listener, are you in the business at all? You sound kind of knowledgeable there. No, I'm, I'm an engineer, but um, okay, and good. I, I read a lot. Right, okay, but. good. You sound like a smart guy. The LD50 stands for the lethal dose 50, and it's the way drugs are measured, whether they're, they're going to be allowed or not. It has to have a low LD50. The, the LD50 is the amount of drug you take to kill 50% of a, a, an animal population. So they'll take 20 rats, and the amount of metformin it takes to kill 10 rats is called the LD50 dose. And the LD50 dose, uh, all drugs have to have a low LD50 dose. But the fact that they have an LD50 dose tells you all you need to know about cytotoxicity. Are you there, Bill? Yeah, yeah. And um, and I agree with you, but I mean, even water has an LD50. Well, yes, but it's the LD50 on water is ridiculously high. The LD50 on drugs are tiny. They're in, they're sure, in the milligrams sure. and the grams. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, right. we're talking. So, yes, you're right. Everything has an LD50. The question is, the LD50 on these things are so tiny. Anyway, Bill, um, thanks for your call. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate smart listeners. Thank you so much for your yeah, call. Yeah, long-term listener, man. Thank you. Bye. I, thank you so much, Bill. Take care, buddy. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. And have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.